Okay, so, hi, hello, welcome back to another creepypasta story time. Uh, you guys seen it, I recently changed the title to, like, creepypasta story to listen to while you blank. I thought it would be kind of funny just to have, like, that also, but the series is still going to be called creepypasta story time. I just changed the title to be more appealing so people can click on the video. That's how YouTube works, baby! But yeah. So, by the title of the video... We're going to be reading The Birds Are Singing. It's a creepypasta that I found and I thought I should read it to you. So this one should take 12 minutes of reading, but um, doing a voiceover is going to be a lot longer. But before I get into the story, I do want to say, please consider using code GOONS over at GamerSubs.gg. You get 10% off any purchase of the tubs, shaker cups, merch, t-shirts, and all that good stuff. And also, just one more thing, this video is a one take. So, if you hear me stumble, fumble, mumble, like make a noise, this is all one take, because I can't edit my videos, so, you know, I'm going through the gauntlet of, uh, you know, doing a one take. But yeah, outside that little, you know, those two little things, let's get into it. So, the birds are singing. This one involves beings and entities, deaths, murders, and disappearances, the strange and unexplained, Anon anonymously authored, and 12 minutes of reading. This one got 8.62 out of 10, so, yeah, let's get into it. So, birds are singing. I don't like telling the story and most people don't believe it when I do. It brings back too many painful memories. Memories that I've been running away from since I was a 10 year old boy. I'd been called a devil, a murderer, a child that was just desperate for attention. I'm 40 now and I'm sure people still question my sanity. I even question my own sanity. It's been 30 years but I will never forget what happened to that house. I will never forget what I heard or what I saw. I saw things and heard things that no living person should see. Things that will leave a scar that can never heal. And things that will leave you to questioning your own sanity. I will warn you, this story, this true story is not for the faint of heart. It was in Ohio, 1985. When we moved into the house, my mother was looking for a fresh start after my father's abusive acts became too much for her to bear. He never touched me or my sister Hannah in any harmful way, but he and my mother would go at it almost every night. My mother would be left with a black guy and a swollen lip. I pretended like I didn't know what was going on, and I regret that now. Hey everyone, quick side note, real quick, I forgot the music, so uh, music's coming in now. My bad. Let's get back into the story. When we first arrived at the house, I could tell that it was really old. The windows were dusty, the paint was weathered and peeling off, and the grass stood almost as tall as I did. It looked abandoned, as if we were the first people to ever, first people to live there in decades. There was also an old swing set in the back, and behind that was a pond that held dirty water with a greenish color. The fence would creak as you opened it, as did the stairs. The first two months were silent. Nothing was really out of the ordinary. But I noticed something that seemed strange to me. I was in the house looking through a window to make sure that Hannah was okay being alone in the backyard. She was on the swing set, but oddly the swing next to her was moving back and forth, as if someone was there with her. But there was no one there, nobody but Hannah. I figured it was probably the wind and I went out there, because I didn't want her to be out there alone. I was very protective of my sister and when I sent her inside, I stayed out there for about a minute and I thought maybe I was imagining things because I saw someone in the hallway window. They looked down right at me, but I couldn't really see their face. Maybe it was Hannah, or maybe it wasn't. 
It wasn't really until the next night when things got frightening. Hannah's screaming echoed throughout the house in the middle of the night. My mother and I woke up quickly and ran over to her and it sounded as if someone was attacking her. But we didn't see anyone, she was just screaming on top of her lungs, pointing up at the ceiling. She's trying to drown me, she screamed more than once. We didn't see anything, but she saw something that night. Something was there. After that night, things started getting weird. I heard footsteps echoing throughout the house, and I know this is going to sound weird, but I heard someone singing. It sounded like a young girl. I knew it wasn't Hannah because it sounded nothing like her. I was laying in bed when I heard it. It must have been around midnight because everyone else was asleep. She sung it over and over again. The birds are singing, singing, singing. Go to bed, go to bed. I'll see you in the morning, morning, morning. Now rest your head, rest your head. It got louder and louder. It sounded as if they were coming towards me. They were getting closer and closer until eventually they were right at my door. I heard water dripping. It sounds strange, but I know what I heard. The sinking stopped suddenly and all I could hear was the water dripping. Then everything became silent. The doorknob started turning just slightly. I hid under the covers and eventually whoever it was or whatever it was had left. This wasn't the only time I had a weird experience like that late at night. I also heard whispers most of the time I heard them coming from the basement. I never understood what the whispers were saying but one night I heard them loud and clear. I was asleep and I heard footsteps in my room. It felt like someone was watching me, like someone was sitting right at the edge of my bed. I lay there with my eyes closed, hoping it'd go away. Then, it whispered. Who are you? I didn't reply. I didn't want to make a habit out of talking to things I couldn't see. It sounded like a woman, and I guess it left afterwards because I didn't hear anything else. I was horrified by what was going on in the house, and I tried to explain it to my mother, but she never believed me. She claimed I was dreaming, and I almost believed that maybe I was dreaming. My mother seemed distant. She wasn't the same person anymore. I was worried about Hannah as well. She must have been traumatized by what she saw that night. I loved my sister, and we did a lot together, but... She became distant as well. One day as I walked past her room, I heard her singing. The birds are singing, singing, singing. Go to bed, go to bed. I'll see you in the morning, morning, morning. Now rest your head, rest your head. I walked in her room and she stopped singing. She was sitting on the floor drawing as usual. Where did you learn that song from, Hannah? I asked her. I learned it from my friend, she replied, pointing towards the, cor the corner of the room. I looked around the room but I didn't see anyone or anything. I noticed her drawing and it was really strange. She drew herself sitting on the swing, and next to her was another girl. Who is that girl you drew? I asked her. That's my friend. Her name is Maddie. I figured she had an imaginary friend. She was only six years old after all, so that was normal. But that didn't explain the song. Is she the one who taught you that song? She shook her head yes. Her mother used to sing it to her every night. She told me, and she still does sometimes. Well, where is she now? I asked her. She dropped her crayon and stood up, stood up off the floor. She's behind you. 
It was then that I felt a cool breeze rush through my body. I turned around slowly just to see myself through a mirror that hung against the wall. That's when I saw her. She was only there for less than two seconds, standing to the right of me and drenched in water. She looked young, around six. The same age as Hannah. I wasn't as scared as I should have been. I asked Hannah if she was a girl who was on the ceiling that one night. She said no and that one who was on the ceiling was Maddie's mother. She said that her mother was evil and she would kill us if we told anybody about her. The same way she killed Maddie. I wasn't scared until then. I wanted to tell my mother but I'm sure she would have not believed me anyway. I just wanted to protect my sister, so I said no words. No words about it to anyone. I didn't really think that a ghost could do any physical harm, but I was 10 at the time. I didn't know much about ghosts. The only thing I knew about them was that they were people who were once living. Later that day, I was walking past the basement when I heard the laughter of a young girl. It sounded like Hannah, so I walked down the stairs. She was sitting alone in the middle of the basement. You shouldn't be down here by yourself, Hannah, I said to her. I'm not by myself, she said. She had one of those old jewelry, jewelry boxes with the ballerina that would twirl and play music when you open it. What are you doing down here? I asked her. Maddie wan wanted to show me her jewelry box. I looked around and I didn't see anybody not that I wanted to. I felt very uneasy like somebody was watching me. Somebody was there. We have to go now, I yelled. We need to get upstairs. I just didn't want to be in that basement. She whispered, you're gonna wake her mother. Get up, Hannah, I yelled. I heard a noise. It came from the other room in the basement. Hannah started crying. I could see the fear in her eyes. She stood up on her feet, dropping the jewelry box. Jewelry box. Danny, she cried, pointing behind me. She's behind you. My heart popped out of my chest. I remember shaking and my heart beating at a rapid pace as I slowly turned around. I froze in fear for a few seconds. She was there. She had long black hair and was wearing a black gown. Her face was pale and her eyes were pitch black. It was like looking in the eyes of death itself. I grabbed Hannah and we ran upstairs to her mother. I wasn't sure she believed us. She told us to stay out of the basement and that was it. That face still haunts me to this day. Hours after that frightening experience, I lay awake in my bed as I couldn't sleep. It was past midnight so everyone else was asleep. I heard music coming from outside my room. I got out of bed thinking that maybe it was Hannah. I peeked out my door, but I didn't see anyone. I walked down the hallway and on the floor in front of Hannah's room was a jewelry box from the basement. I watched the ballerina twirl around and around and around again. Everything was like in slow motion. I became lightheaded and the air was cold and heavy. Somebody was watching me. I heard somebody singing singing that same song. It was a young girl this time. It was a young girl this time. It was a woman. Wait, hold on. Hey, there's a typo. It wasn't a young girl this time. It was a woman. The singing was coming from Hannah's room. I opened, the, I opened her door and the singing stopped. I didn't see anyone. Hannah was fast asleep. 
asked her about it the next day, but she had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. Weeks after that incident was when everything took a turn for the worse. Just like before, she was screaming on the top of her lungs in the middle of the night. We ran to her, my mother and I. She's trying to drown me, she screamed. She's trying to drown me. Who? My mother asked. Who are you talking about? Hannah stopped screaming and stood from her bed. She was shaking. Her face was pale and her voice became weak. Her eyes were wide as she stood there. Almost like she was frozen, like she couldn't move. She's behind the door, she whispered. Suddenly. Oh, she's behind the door, she whispered suddenly, pointing at the door with a horrifying look in her eyes. Bam! The door slammed shut, and I found myself alone, outside in the hallway. They were screaming. My mother and my sister were screaming, and there was nothing I could do. I tried to open the door, but it was stuck. Let me in. Let me in, I yelled. I kicked, and I punched, because that was all that I could do. They were screaming as loud as they could until suddenly, the screaming stopped. Mom! Hannah! I screamed out. No answer. They were dead. My mother and my sister were dead. That was all I could think about. The birds are singing, singing, singing. Go to bed, go to bed. I'll see you in the morning, morning, morning. Now rest your head, rest your head. It sounded like my mother. I heard the door unlock from the other side, and I opened it only to slowly find. I opened it slowly to find my mother sitting at the side of the bed, singing to Hannah, who was fast asleep. She then stood up. I saw the emptiness in her eyes as she walked by me, as if I wasn't even there. I was beyond confused, and all of it just didn't make any sense. I woke up I woke up the next morning to a loud noise coming from the kitchen. I ran downstairs to see my mother making breakfast, soaking wet and singing that damn song. Why why are you wet, mother? I asked. She said nothing. Where's Hannah? Who who are you? she whispered. It's me, mother. Uh, I'm your son. She looked at me, staring into my eyes as if she was stealing my soul. She smiled, a crooked, evil smile I never saw before. I don't have a son, she said. Now run along. Maddie isn't available. She walked down the basement and closed the door. After less than a minute, I heard a loud noise that echoed from the basement. I ran upstairs to Hannah's room, searching everywhere to f everywhere for her. She wasn't in there. I walked out into the hall, and that's when I saw her walk down the stairs. I breathed a sigh of relief, and I thought she was dead. I chased after her, and she led me outside, but I lost her as I shuffled through the tall grass. I ran to the backyard thinking she might be playing on a swing stud. I didn't see her, but the swings were both swinging rapidly. I heard laughter and it sounded like two young girls. One of them actually sounded like Hannah, but I couldn't see anyone. I walked behind the swing set and that's when I saw her. She was floating, lifeless, faced down in the pond. I heard her voice as it echoed with the wind. She was singing. 
The birds are singing, singing, singing. Go to bed, go to bed. I'll see you in the morning, morning, morning. Now rest your head, rest your head. Okay, so hopefully y'all enjoyed The Birds Are Singing. I really enjoyed that creepypasta. That's my first time reading it, and it, I'm glad I read it. And hopefully y'all enjoyed listening to it. Honestly, I think that's probably the best video I had recorded. I only messed up a few times this time around, so I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. But yeah, yeah again, hopefully y'all enjoyed. Also, sorry, uh, you hear me... I bump into the story. Also, I don't know if you guys heard the horror music. Um, or the music in the background. Um, I kind of had it on low volume. So maybe if you guys maybe picked up. Maybe it didn't. But yeah. But hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Um, the story is a 9 out of 10 in my book. It was pretty good. Uh, there was a couple typos. But you know, I can't type for crap. So it's all good. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I don't have anything else to necessarily say. Um, I actually might bump this video up. I did record a couple videos already. Uh, I've recorded two creepypasta videos. There is a Nina the Killer video coming out. Uh, it's supposed to be a Friday, but I might switch that one with this one because I do like the story. But I don't know. Maybe I'll save this one for a Monday. But yeah. Um, all my links are down below if you want to uh, find me out there. I also have a Ko-Fi uh, Ko link or a coffee link because I don't actually make any money off these videos. Um, you know, if you may see an ad on my YouTube video, it's, I'm getting paid nothing for it. Uh, YouTube takes all that. So, you know, it's a lot of fun, but <laughs> it is what it is. But yeah, I have a Ko-Fi link down below. I have a goal of getting a PC so I can actually edit videos and make these a lot better. But, you know, you just watching the video and supporting the video by, you know, watching. That means a lot to me, so thank you for being here. And, yeah, I don't have anything else to say. All links are down below. You can find my Instagram, Twitter, ATN Up Twitter, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah. Uh, also, use code GOONS at GamerSubs.gg. Um, you know, you get 10% off, off any purchases over there on tubs, uh, cups, shirts, and all that good stuff. I don't think I'm missing anything else, so I'm going to end it here. So, I do want to say, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here. As you guys later. Bye, everyone.